Welcome back everyone to another Company Fears 2 Repodcast. This time it is going to be a 1v1 sent in by Dance Macabre. And he's going to be playing as the UKF. His opponent is going to be Kite Bali or Kite Bali playing as the Wehrmacht. And it's on Halbe, which is a community map. Uh, in case you've never seen this map, let's just Hilo. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> it's good. Good to see some sportsmanship. Uh, yeah, let's just have a quick overview. There's a big highway in the middle of the map. It's, of course, negative cover, so you need to be very careful while walking through in this area. And, uh, of course, the VPs are the first one is in the middle of the entire negative cover area. The second one is on one side of the road. The third one is on the other side of the road, with fuels being on the extreme ends and the munitions being in the center. So a very, very classical layout when it comes to uh, the point layout. I just said the layout twice. Anyway, <laughs> yes, uh, pretty much nothing strange coming out of there. And there's also a cutoff that's um, just inside the base. Yes. Just magnify this so you can see. So if you hold, of course, the victory point, you can cut off your the central one. You can cut off your opponent from either fuel, depending on, of course, who controls which. And yeah, let's see. So we've got a machine gun coming through, plus a infantry section. Probably a very, very good choice on this map, since it is very, very open. And uh, with a lot of negative cover and no cover areas, so, uh, you know, machine guns will be ex excellent pretty much anywhere. And right now we already see an interesting little placement at the extreme corner of the map. With that machine gun, uh, just needs to wait for enemies to actually reveal themselves. And he's actually going to build a trench at the fuel point, which is probably a very good decision. Except at this point, it's going to get countered uh, by the MG42. And as soon as I see this MG42 come into my line of sight from the fog of war, I'd uh, you know stop building this because even when suppressed, the MG42 is going to still fire its main weapon. Although very luckily, the Vickers actually snipes the MG42 gunner and allows. The infantry section a little bit of extra time to build up this trench and in fact the grenadiers are also going to get suppressed before they're able to do too much there's a nice flank coming in from these pioneers but the pioneers aren't going to be enough because uh now the trench has been completed and the infantry is sitting inside so um just flanking around the mg isn't going to be enough for the pioneers to survive this because the infantry section is going to be able to easily support their comrades and right now we see the switcheroni we have the, of course, MG getting in the trench while the infantry section gets out, and this extra grenadier squad is also going to get forced back. So a very, very good first engagement overall. Only two units of the Brits taking down the entire force from the Wehrmacht and forcing it back to base, allowing the extra infantry section a lot more time to actually cap around the map. So this is exactly what Dance Macabre should be doing, using his extra troops, just capturing all over and getting some extra resource advantage, transforming his when in the engagement into more and more advantages and snowballing himself forward very very nicely done let's speed it up because of course everybody's still kind of licking their wounds we have another sapper actually uh, so we have first tier one upgraded from dance macabre of course he can go for either a bofors or a ac at this point both would be pretty good or neither of course but um i wouldn't you know despise the bofors too much on this map with all the open space I mean, you'd have to defend yourself against pack guns, but overall, it seems like it could work out pretty well. Overall. Anyway, uh, so M6 mine actually placed, so good on uh, Dance Macabre. The problem is, I think that these Grandiers spotted the mine being laid um, when they came in to harass the point. They found the MG, of course, still in the trench and treated, but overall, mm. so of course, Ke Kite Bali knows that he is kind of in danger of getting cut off and he built an admission sketch on the point probably a good decision and then he's gonna go in and try to capture the middle vp right now the vp situation is of course quite even but overall nothing too major we have an interesting engagement from these infantry sections they could have just stood at range and destroyed the pioneers that way but they decide to close in they still destroy the pioneers but they take unnecessary losses because of that a little bit of an unfortunate uh yeah thing for these Four infantries. Of course, second infantry section comes in and is going to be able to capture the middle. Quite nice for Dancer Camber. He's definitely got an advantage. Kite goes for a Tiger Ace. Of course, the Tiger Ace stock run the Elite Troops. Elite Troops is okay, but I just don't like it all that much because, of course, the Tiger comes in very, very late at 17 CPs. 
It doesn't cost any fuel, but it does decrease your fuel income and your manpower income by pretty severe penalties. And you need to be very, very careful about how you use it. There's a lot of people that just kind of uh, derp around with the Tiger Ace and don't do too much. Here comes the flank from these Grandiers, just charging up to the green cover of the infantry section. Of course, at close range, the green cover does not provide any bonuses when the enemy is shooting at you from less than 10 units, I think it was the number. I'm not entirely sure. I think it was 10, but might have been... Might have been 15, might have been 8. Anyway, at close range, the green cover doesn't really matter too much. And of course, the numerical superiority of the green, uh, the green years did matter quite a bit. And right now, we have some more infantry sections fighting it out with the green years. Green years, of course, getting upgraded with the G40 freeze from uh, the elite troops. And this is a pretty bad engagement for all parties involved. They're taking a lot of damage. Here comes a grenade. So, that's Macabre going for the early grenades. I've seen a couple of British players do this lately just to surprise opponents, of course. Don't really see the Mills bomb being used all that much uh, from the Brits normally, so of course, just randomly getting grenaded sometimes leads to a uh, well, not maybe lucky, but definitely unexpected squad wipe. So that's what Dance Macabre was going for, but unfortunately, only one model loss for the Green Gears. Infantry section trying to flank around the MG42 is quite okay at this point. I feel like this MG in the trench should just be taken off and um, positioned somewhere else on the map. What the hell? Anyway, um, this is somewhere else on the map because right now there isn't really any danger of uh, the point getting decapped and the fuel falling into the hands of the Germans. And if there was even, you could just send in a couple of uh, infantry sections to deal with that. Right now it seems like, yeah, the MG forced away, but there's a second grade year squad in the area, so the infantry also has to go. And... Oh, Stormtroopers. So of course from elite troops you can deploy those Stormtroopers and there's actually a little tiny hidden building down in the uh, southwest, southeastern corner of the map. And is there any equivalent on the, so, yeah, on the northwest there's also an equivalent building that uh, I'm guessing could be used to spawn some Stormtroopers. And I'm not the biggest fan of Stormtroopers because while they do have that uh, interesting option of getting only one Panzer Trek, for a reduced cost, and while they do have the excellent camouflage, overall it just, you know, for a similar price to the Panzer Grandiers, in fact pretty much the same price as the Panzer Grandiers, you're getting more with the Panzer Grandiers, I feel like, except of course the um, Gorilla Deployment, which is, I mean, quite good, but you need to be using it very, very effectively, and right now, I mean, we have, ooh, grenade, that was partially devastating, it almost destroyed the building. Uh, well, that can be useful. I mean, I feel like what uh, Kite Bali was going for is actually capturing this point, which he could have done, but having spawned in the building here, he would have had to like switch around and go around here instead of going through here, because if he went through the south, he would have been pinned by the base MG. So he wanted to take down the cutoff point and then cut off, of course, the fuel, which he right now accomplishes thanks to his capturing of the PP. And right now the AC unfortunately comes into play at exactly the same time as the Grenadiers get the, oh no, the Stormtroopers get the Panzer Tracker and oh, oh, Commandos. Okay, so Commandos for Dance Macabre and of course Guerrilla Deployment from the Infiltration Commandos of Mobile Assault. So that not only gives them Mobile Commandos but also the uh, Flamer on the Sappers. Flamer takes a bit of a beating and goes down. Very, very unfortunate loss of 60 munitions and 210 manpower? Is it right? Is 210? But yeah, 210. Uh, so not the best for Dance Macabre, but overall, with the AC, he's got a mobility advantage on the battlefield. The only thing that's really uh, a bit of a counter to the uh, T70, the AC, is the uh, Panzer Shrek squad, but that Panzer Shrek squad cannot be everywhere at once. Will whereas the AC mostly can. I mean, it's, it's not going to be literally everywhere at once, but it's got much, much better mobility than all these infantry units, and that's not going to be that good for these Grenadiers trying to build a bunker. I'm not sure why. Probably just to cover this point. I'm not sure why he would do that, though. Uh, still, does not really work out for them and get forced away. Uh, of course, he's also building a medic bunker in the base. I'm guessing this is going to be turned into a medic bunker. And he's going for a pack. Of course, a pack is a pretty decent decision right now. It's going to help counter the AC. Of course, it's not going to be the best possible counter because the AC can just simply flank around the pack. But it's going to be nice to cover some key positions and make sure that those don't get uh, harassed by the T7, uh, T7, 
AC because of too many Soviet games. Uh, yeah, overall, it seems like the Rainiers are trying to push in. And right now, really, those G43s are working against them very much because uh, they're better at medium to close ranges. And on this map, with all the long range that there is, yeah, we will not really be seeing a lot of um, good G43 action. The infantry sections at long range, especially with that green cover bonus for extra rate of fire, will definitely plow over the G43s. And with the commandos, even close range, the G43s will not have an easy time because, of course, if they come in and there's commandos around, well, it's not going to be a good time for them. So the infantry commandos, um, I mean, they're not my favorite unit. They're very expensive at 440, even more expensive than those stormtroopers at 340. And I feel like they provide even less than the Stormtroopers, but what they do have over the Storms is a much better anti-infantry killing potential. And that's exactly what Dance Macabre is looking to use, especially from pretty much the theme of Mobile uh, Assault. Especially because later on he gets the Land Mattress, which he's going to be, um, I'm guessing, going for. He needs to be very careful with that to not let it fall into enemy hands or uh, let it get counter batteried or something. But if he can use that correctly against the mostly infantry focused strategy that seems Kite Valley is going for, he's going to have an easy, easy time. So Triple Cap is on the field for Dance Macabre. That's a very, very, very good thing for him right now. Of course, he's draining the Amer American, the uh, Axis VPs by free every three seconds, and that's quite, quite strong. Basically, one per second. Don't, uh, don't want to get that, um, you know, <laughs> bonus to the enemy, you don't want to give them that, you need to absolutely uh, take away one of their VPs as soon as possible. And right now, I mean, Cat Valley was going for the left side, which would be his, I guess, natural VP, and with the support of the Panzer Shrex, he could deal with the AC, but right now, all his infantry is doing is dying, and they're taking a lot of fire. AC takes a bit of a Panzer Faust, and of course, a pack gun round so that's gonna make it retreat but the infantry from the brits is actually able to just repel the german infantry on their own there's a bit of a problem in that there's this mg and unfortunately the british infantry get baited in to the mg and this point at this point they're gonna get pretty well destroyed uh they should definitely retreat yeah as soon as possible retreat both players have a lot of fuel in reserve i wonder what they're gonna be doing with that i mean that's macabre Hasn't upgraded the company command post yet. I feel like he should be as quickly as possible instead of going for an AT gun. Although the AT gun is a very safe pick right now. He doesn't want to get caught off guard by any uh, German vehicle. He might as well have just gone for a Cromwell at this point. And uh, tried to go for you know a medium tank to counter the German medium tank. But Kite Valley at the same time isn't going for any uh, vehicles of his own. And... I get the terrible feeling that he might be trying to wait for the tiger race, which would be a terrible decision right now, because he's starting to come back into this game slightly. I mean, he's still um, very much in the back foot when it comes to VPs, but he's got the resource advantage at this point when it comes to fuel, so he's got more fuel income than his opponents. And he's about to secure another fuel point on the right side if he's like savvy enough to bring up a couple of squads with Rifle grenades, he can definitely rifle grenade the trench and uh, force away the MG, the Vickers. But overall, if he just lets that advantage slip, he's going to have a really hard time later on. Because of course the Brits, you have some pretty scary late game options. Uh, not, you know, Mobile Assault isn't exactly the best one, best one doctrine to exploit these late game options. But at the same time, it can help out with the repair crew and of course... The Land Mattress can be quite a good little AT, uh, not AT, uh, artillery vehicle. Not really a vehicle, but still. Quite a decent artillery unit. Especially to help out with a defensively minded um, a defensively minded opponent. It's going to be very, very nice. And right now, this is just a bit of a stalemate. No player seems to be willing to do too much. And right now, we see that the Grenadiers are coming from the right side. Making a mistake first by hobbling up, but then they get... Um, spread out which is good and these grand years unfortunately doesn't uh you know doesn't fire the rifle grenade in time and that's kind of a shame because he could have done that a lot earlier and of course these grand years take a lot of damage from the m6 mine and they avoid the other m6 mine interesting lucky for them because they would have probably you know died the squad would have been wiped by another mine and at this point 
once he saw the mine go off, I think that at this point, Ked Valley should definitely go for a second engineer as quickly as he could. Um, like, as soon as you see a mine go off, you just... If you have an engineer that's ready to be upgraded, you upgrade it with a hazard removal package and you get the minesweeper. Or if you don't have one, like in this case with Kite having only already a pioneer upgraded with a flamer, you just instantly buy another pioneer squad and you get a minesweeper. You don't want to let your opponent have uh, free reign, placing down mines around the map and getting essentially free damage off on your troops and especially your vehicles later on uh, with the damaged engine from the mine. You don't want to be eating that up like that, uh, because it's just not what you want to have happen to you. And that's, ooh, also this AC is doing a little bit of a desperate move, just charging after the AT gun. But thankfully for uh, Dance Macabre, the, you know, the Grenadiers don't really panzer fast it before uh, the AC managed to do a little bit of damage to the pack, but it's still going to go down. Still, that was a very, very bad move. You don't charge AT guns with light vehicles. And you especially don't charge AT guns that are actually supported by infantry. So, pretty decent victory for the Germans still. Uh, however, they're getting triple capped by the uh, Allies, and that's not very good. That's not very good at all. He needs to get some kind of uh, some kind of unit that can deal with this. He needs more pioneers to be able to harass around the map and capture around where the um, British units aren't. He needs to be able to use the stormtroopers a little bit better. They've got the camouflage. And he's upgraded with them with uh, G43s, so they can be quite useful at ambushing and flanking. And with that uh, bundle grenade, they can take out those MGs in the trenches quite easily. So what you want to do is you want to be more dynamic, more active. And he's going for a panther at this point, which is a terrible move. He should have gone for a P4 or uh, an alternative, a broom bear. Although the broom bear, without any uh, supporting AT vehicles, is a little bit dangerous. I feel like a P4 would have been so much better for him because. Um, the AT defenses for Dance Macabre were limited to a Piat squad over here, only one Piat and the AT gun for a long, long time. And in fact, still, he does not really have a lot of vehicles or AT. He hasn't upgraded to the tier 3. That's a very big mistake, in my opinion, because at this point, he's just kind of letting this 230 fuel go to waste. He went for a land mattress, which is, of course, 40 fuel. Uh, but overall, he needs to use some of that uh, some of that fuel that he got, you know, from his early wins and uh, early map control. And even now, he's got control of both um, both of the um, fuel points on the flanks. So he's got some big advantages, and he's kind of throwing them away, just like Kite Valley. Uh, after receiving an advantage from his opponent, throwing away an advantage is throwing the advantage again by going for a panther. The reason why he's throwing that away is because the path really isn't going to be able to do too much to this British force. I mean, look at this. We have artillery, AT gun, lots of infantry. What about this first barrage? Not really doing all too much. And a couple of support weapons. So what is the Panther going to do against all this? It's going to lock away with the 75mm and not really be able to do too much. And it's going to be useful against the trench a little bit. But overall, <laughs> it missed, of course. But overall, it's not going to be able to massacre infantry the way a P4 would be able to. At this point, I feel like a P4 would be so much better. It's just missing, as you can see. It just misses way too much against infantry. And at this point, here comes the AT gun. And at that, the Panther does not retreat. So this is definitely a huge mistake. You need to be very, very careful about AT guns. And of course, nice infiltration commando flank. That's exactly what these guys are useful for. And they actually get on the AT gun. And, of course, hello, I'm in your rear. <laughs> of course, the pack doesn't truly need to be in the rear of a panther to penetrate it all the time, because it's a, um, it's a pretty good anti-vehicle uh, anti unit. It's got some great armor piercing, but it just helps. And, of course, the panther manages to escape slightly. We have the AT gun crew chasing. Yeah, the commandos trying to get the last finishing shot on the panther. Not really able to do that, but they could you know, uh, drag the AT gun back to the allied lines and perhaps even use it to destroy the munitions cache. It's a very nice flank from the commandos, managing to do a lot of damage and completely shut down Kite Valley's, um, Kite Valley's groups. Overall, he does not seem to have very much of a idea on how to recover from this. I mean, he managed to capture one of the VPs, so he's not triple capped anymore, but still, we have a massive advantage for the Brits when it comes to VPs. 480 to 105, so overall I just don't see how he's going to come back from this. 
He needed to go for a Panzer IV, not a, a Panther at this point. Especially once he saw that his opponent was not going for a lot of vehicles himself, after of course the AC. He really should have been a little bit more considerate with his fuel. Especially considering that he also had a little bit of a disadvantage in the early game when it came to fuel. He had lost his fuel point for a while. And yeah, not really the best. Not really the best. And yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. Anyway, so we have another land mattress barrage. Not really doing too much. I hate the land mattress so much. I mean, it got a few kills. It's doing okay, but it's getting blocked by the trees, and so it's not able to. Oh, gets a squad wipe. So not the worst. Wiped the grenadier. Got a few kills and a lot of vet from hitting the bunker. So I guess that that is helpful. And finally, we have Dance Macabre going for a company command post. Uh, as the panther is kind of just roaming around without anything to do. Unemployed panther is worst panther. Yeah, so he's just kind of like, yeah, me, I'm going. And of course, runs into two AT guns that actually knew it was coming because it went over the um, standard territory point. And at this point, yeah, I'm not quite sure what the panther is going to attempt at this point because of the uh, AT guns just constantly switching around there. Um, you know, cones of fire, and eventually they're going to be able to catch this panther. And yeah, be able to destroy it. Of course, we also have the cutoff coming in from the British troops, pushing right up to the base. So no more fuel coming in for the Germans. Even if they wanted to remedy their mistake, it is a little bit too late, as it goes up in flames. Yeah, overall, playback over. So we have the surrender from Kai Valley. Actually, not. No, no surrender, it's just, he just quit because it's playback over. But yeah, I think that overall, going for that panther was the biggest mistake that Cag Valley made. Also, not going for a mortar was a very, very interesting decision. I mean, he could have used the mortar very, very um, early on against the trenches, and that would have at least reduced the annoyance from the trenches and overall reduced the impact that the MGs played in the infantry fights in the early game. Also, another option, rather than the Panzer IV, might have been a uh, Panzer Riffer. Of course, that would have required Tier 4. So, if you wanted to go Tier 4 for, uh, you know, later access to the Panzer, you might as well have gone Panzer Riffer, because that would have in would have been a lot more useful against a clumped up sort of support weapon infantry play from Dance Macabre, and it would have forced them into uh, an early company command post perhaps with uh, a Cromwell purchase, because of course Cromwell's pretty good at hunting down the Panzer Riffers. And then after that you could have gone for a Panther to counter the Cromwell. Maybe. Who knows. Overall, pretty good game. I want to thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.